Hello my pretties and welcome to another thrillingly exciting episode of Techspert Weekly, guaranteed the only weekly tech news show on YouTube presented by a baldy northern alcoholic with little to no knowledge of what actually happened this past week. To be perfectly honest, you'd probably be better off watching a show on astrophysics presented by Danny Dyer. At least that would be marginally entertaining, if ultimately just as pointless. But anyway, that's about all of the intro that I can be bothered to do today, so let's whip out that jingle and get busy. Techspert Weekly! And speaking of busy, it has actually been an action-packed week as far as tech news goes, especially in the mid-range mobile market. But first up, for anyone who actually bothered to watch last week's show, can you remember this bit? And first up, Michael says, I'm missing Motorola, those slackers. Aren't we due for another Motorola handset? Mate, seriously, don't even. They will watch this and they will release another half a dozen handsets just to spite all of us. He was just joking, Mr. Motorola. Please don't release 20 more Moto G8 phones. Please, thank you, please, sir. Thank you, please. Well, you only went and f***ing did it, Michael, because yes, guess what? Motorola launched yet another smartphone this Tuesday. Thanks, buddy. The Moto G 5G Plus is hitting stores this week and it's one of the cheapest ways of getting that 5G future proof and serving up some rather tasty specs for just 300 quid. You've got the very capable Qualcomm Snapdragon 765 chipset packed in there along with a mighty 5000 mAh battery plus an HDR display and a triple lens camera. All highly spank worthy news indeed and definitely one of the cheapest ways of getting your mitts on a Snapdragon 765 smartphone here in the UK or at least it was for roughly 24 hours until Realme went and spoiled the party by kicking in the door and launching its Realme X50 5G phone. You may remember I've actually already reviewed the Realme X50 Pro 5G when there's still no sign of the standard X50, slightly confusing, but it has now finally emerged here in Europe for the rather lovely tidy sum of 350 euros or roughly 300 quid again. And again like the Moto G 5G Plus this seems to offer stunning value for money. You once again have that Snapdragon 765 chipset except this time it's the 765G which offers a bit more graphic called clout, definitely good news for you gamers. The battery isn't quite as big as Motorola's handset admittedly at 4200 milliamp but what you do get is a 120 hertz display which is frankly nuts. That's better than most flagships and even the Realme X50 Pro edition only topped out at a 90 hertz display. And hopefully I'll be bringing you full unboxings and in-depth reviews of both of those handsets rather soon. And just when I was ready to slip under the duvet with a bottle of vodka and a pack of pork scratchings, OnePlus came along to ruin my afternoon by trickling out yet more teasing information on its upcoming OnePlus Nord. That's yet another wallet friendly mid-range 5G smartphone if you haven't been following the news which we now know is launching on July the 21st. And we know this courtesy of this very funky invite which OnePlus sent out to a whole bunch of people in the post and it looks very straightforward until you do this. Oh, 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 oh. Whoop, 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 whoop cheeky. Definitely never gets old. And what the invite basically says is that because a physical event is impossible right now, OnePlus has opted for an AR launch instead. And you can download the official launch app from Google Play or the Apple App Store right now. This allows you to create a personalized avatar. And yes, I am fully aware that virtual Chris here has more hair than the real me. Just let me have this one little victory, all right? Okay, so maybe we should make this a little bit more realistic. And if this was an actual launch, I'd probably have had a few beers by the time this all came kicked off so yeah that's probably a bit better and right now the app doesn't really do much at all beyond letting you set up that avatar and then showing you a countdown timer for the oneplus node launch although on launch day presumably virtual you will be able to have a play around with a virtual oneplus node and you may need this little cardboard jobby which came with the invite as for virtual me as usual i'll probably be propped up at the virtual bar and if you're super keen on getting yourself a oneplus node you can actually pre-order the phone right now even though we don't really know much about it beyond what's already kind of sort of leaked. But anyway, it can't be avoided any longer. It's time to don the face mask and push on into the plague pit. That is viewer comments. Woo woo. Viewer comments. <laughs> So first up, Gordy says, before next week's viewer questions, can you tot up all of the Android phones released so far in 2020? Bloody hell, mate, you don't ask for much, do you? Well, doing a quick tally, I've personally reviewed 25 Android smartphones so far this year, just over half of the year gone. And of course, that's probably not even half the number of Android phones that have actually come out in the UK because there have been so many of the buggers. And probably about two thirds of the ones that I have reviewed have been sodden Motorola's. And last week, we were talking about a possible Sony tablet comeback, which would be frankly stunning stuff indeed. Richard says, do you think it could be called something non-confusing like the Xperia 1T Mark 
one. And frankly, at this point, I think that Sony should just go for something completely off the wall mental like the Sony Xperia consensual choke bondage. I mean, it's not to get people clicking the old links, right? Mark says, I'm actually watching this on my Sony Z4 tablet. It's still going strong and I love it. And that's incredible. For something that's five years old now, that is holding up incredibly well. And also one of the only waterproof tablets out there as well. So the only option pretty much if you want to kick back in the bath with a proper tablet to watch a bit of Last of the Summer Wine or what? <laughs> Why the hell did I pick that out of all of the things? I might as well have said f***ing Yerangmalud or something. But yeah, a bit of Bath Netflix action or whatever. Can your iPad do that? Can it bollocks? Uh, next up, John says, Is it possible to cut out the swearing as I have my laptop in the lounge room where the kids can hear you? Uh, sorry, John, I think I might have already kind of f***ed that one up a bit. But yeah, apologies, I am admittedly something of a rather bad potty mouth. And I do try and tone it down for the videos, I really, really do. Especially because, frankly, it's a pain in the arsehole region to actually censor out all of these naughty words when I'm working my editing magic. But I do, at the very least, always cut out the shits and the f and the mother and all of that bad stuff, uh, just in case the kitty winks are listening in. Naughty, naughty. And definitely all the c as well. I know a lot of people still don't like c uh, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, got to keep the sh** as PG friendly as possible. Next up, Matt says, cold in England during summer. What a surprise. I'll tell you what, it's been f***ing miserable out there this week. Sorry, uh, blummin' miserable. Sorry, John. Just depressingly great. It's July, man. It's July and it's my birthday in July. Please, can we at least have sunshine for my birthday? Just this one thing I'm asking. That's it. So I can get drunk in the garden instead of my living room as usual. Uh, Matt also has a techie question as well. He says, uh, Chris, your thoughts on the Snapdragon 765 versus the 865, what are the biggest differences? It's mainly just down to the processing power, uh, to be perfectly honest. The flagship Snapdragon 865 is meant for those flagship smartphones that can basically do more at the same time. But, you know, I've tested out a few 765 and 765G handsets now, and they're perfectly capable as well. They'll do everything that you want them to do, and especially if you get the 765G, that's geared towards gamers. That'll run all of the latest Android titles, and it'll be smooth as a buttered up Barry White, no worries whatsoever. And of course, you've got the integrated 5G modem in there as well so you can get your 5g support which to be fair some snapdragon 865 smartphones do not offer because you've got to bolt it on with that thing and most of those super primo snapdragon 865 features that you don't get in the 765 the likes of the support for 4k displays and 8k video recording it's pretty niche stuff anyway which a lot of phones don't even take advantage of next up someone called yoda's bellend says uh, what's the score with uk networks and oneplus i want a oneplus 8 pro but not enough to take out a contract with the wank network 3 and before i get into even more trouble from John, can I just point out that wank was Yoda's bellend's words, not mine. And yeah, I thought we'd found the best YouTube username last week, but you know what, extra points for pure unadulterated filth there, good job. And to answer the question, yes, absolutely no problem, the OnePlus phones work on any UK network, and even if you buy it direct from 3, I'm pretty sure they don't lock phones to their network anymore anyway, I don't think many of the networks do. So just bung a different sim in, and all good. Uh, next up, Jim says, hey, I'm of Scandinavian descent and I am a pothead <laughs> and I mean I'm sure there are plenty of other great things to do over in good old Scandinavia but I'm pretty sure if you had a list of the top Scandinavian hobbies uh, smoking a ball would probably be in the top three right but out of curiosity I've just had a quick google search and uh, this website I found I'm sure it's perfectly legit says Scandinavians love to practice indoor hobbies and activities that don't require going outside yeah no shit, Sherlock because they've got even worse weather than us f so yeah, indoor hobbies, so basically boozing, smoking and a good bit of self-flagellation every now and then. On the ongoing subject of macro lenses and how much they suck, uh, Patrick does actually have a very valuable contribution here. He says there is a use for a macro lens, reading the small print on your phone contract and when you get to a certain age they're handy for reading the small print on a whole lot of stuff. And that's a very good point and everyone thought that that could be a potential uh, use for it all. Uh, my eyes suck as well but uh, I'm a distance thing so I'm fine for reading small print but something's more than two foot away that's when it gets a bit blurry and that's before I start on the vodka as well I just like to point out but yes thanks to Patrick for actually coming up with a legitimate reason for macro lenses to exist and next up Shilvio says could you give us an alert if you get the information about any phones that finally make the trip to North America and yeah I'm actually genuinely surprised by how few smartphones seem to come out in the US compared with the Europe and uh, the Europe and Asia in general as well I thought that American YouTubers were just really lazy just covering basically Samsung and 
an apple and not much else but to be honest it doesn't look like there's actually that much more to cover but yeah sometimes I get the information uh, on American releases as well as the European stuff so I'll definitely pass that on where appropriate next up the Chrissy B says who did you get to do those studio quality jingles they're amazing. Gee, I think my sarcasm detector just blew the f up. But to answer your question, I'm very much a firm believer in that old adage, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing well. On the other hand, if it's a jingle, just spank it out in one take and get on with your life. I uh, mean, while Zach says, please refresh your intro, uh, well, see above, basically. If I did do a new intro, it would be just as half assed as the old one, if not even worse. So is that really what you want me to do? Uh, oh, and Zach continues as well. And any chance that you could talk about the upcoming Snapchat Dragon 875 chipset. Well, actually, that's a good point because just this week, Qualcomm actually launched its fresh new Snapdragon 865 Plus, which is a step up from the flagship 865 launched at the end of last year. And basically, what you get is just a slightly updated CPU, slightly faster processor, basically, um, slightly more graphical clout as well. You got full support for Wi Fi 6E and you got Bluetooth 5.2 on there as well. So, definitely not a big jump over the original 865. It's just one of those things that uh, manufacturers putting out smartphones towards the end of the year can say hey it's got the 865 plus in here that makes it better than everything else that's come before it until of course we get the 875 towards the end of the year again i know great mate the true lord septimus is back again hello great lord he says hi chris i think you can make an entertaining mattress review if you put your mind to it maybe drink four grand's worth of sponsored vodka first and that is actually a great shout i wish i'd had the smarts to have thought of that one myself how much bodily fluid can a mattress tolerate before it explodes in a shower of regret I should probably make this the last one because, I've, again, I've been banging on for, like, ages. Uh, Matthew says, I've just bought the Oppo Finex 2 Neo Blue, which I'm loving, by the way. Would love to see you do a review on it, hopefully soon, although I'm getting a bit stacked up again, so to speak. Uh, but there is one strange issue I'm having. Weirdly, it likes attracting dust and fluff to it. I've put it next to my old phone and watched it attract dust and fluff, whereas my old phone doesn't. Gotta say, this sounds like some sort of crazy-ass tech X-file or something. And I'm definitely no expert on the realms of dust and uh, general fluff, uh, but I'm guessing it's got something to do with the amount of static electricity that the Oppo Finex 2 Neo builds up. Well, I've got to say, like, pretty much every smartphone I review these days just attracts dust, like a Greg's attracts men with ill-fitting jeans. It can't just be me, right? Like, every time, and I talk, and every time I go into a branch of Greg's, there's at least one dude in there who's convincing himself that he's still a size 28 waist, even though that train buggered off out of the station probably about two decades prior. So you either get the nice, uh, lovely bit of belly overhang, otherwise you get a nice generous helping of arse crack on shore lovely stuff but if nothing else it'll be saving me a packet on steak bakes and also preventing me from developing my own lovely bit of belly overhang because i've always lost my appetite long before i get to the front of the queue uh anyway what was the original question again nothing to do with greg's or steak bakes i don't think um but never mind anyway we're running out of time so i better crack on so once again this week had lots of review requ review requests <laughs> i don't know what happened there <laughs> reboot the brain uh, Motorola One Fusion, uh, Shock Horror, and also the Mi 10 Lite 5G, Nokia 8.3, No Worries Kiddies, Uncle Spurt is on it. And taking a look at the week ahead, on Tuesday the Realme X50 5G is officially launched in the UK, even though it's already launched in Europe, we already know exactly what to expect, etc. So hopefully, get that phone in, give you a full unboxing. I've requested a sample of the Moto G 5G Plus as well, so again, fingers crossed, and no doubt there'll be more teasing, trickling information coming out on the OnePlus Nord. And I've got a few other things up my sleeve as well. Well, so definitely stay tuned for lots more fun and shenanigans next week and of course another Techspert Weekly on Friday if you've got absolutely nothing better to do with your life. So please do smash your comments down below. We'll get through as many of those as possible next week. Thank you very much to everyone who commented this week. Apologies if I didn't quite get to yours and have yourselves a lovely weekend. Cheers everyone. Love you.